No matter how much of a screwball or a con artist Garrison was, his trial was an actual thing you could portray on film. Yeah. And so you could p- use it to pump in everything else. And that means you have to sacrifice some reality, like the reality of who Garrison is. You have to turn him into Atticus Finch. And you have to sacrifice some smaller truths for the greater truth of the gay conspiracy to kill the president. <laughs> it's emotionally true. Yeah. And so, like, yeah, okay, he walks out of the courtroom, uh, Clay Shaw is acquitted. The film ends, and then they give you like some end cards that like are like you know, yeah. The Warren Committee, the CIA did admit that they were had some connection to Clay Shaw, blah blah blah. And then, in possibly my favorite part of the movie, the last single title card before the credits roll says, "This film is dedicated to the youth of America, whose like searching spirit for <laughs> truth like lives on." I wonder why we were all so blown away by it as children. It's like, That's me, dude. Yeah, it's, it's up to us, man. It's like, we I did got- it. I'm going to go to fucking Langley and I'm opening those files myself. Should we say like the theory that we concluded on? Okay, that? well, yeah, this is where I want to talk about like overall, like what do we actually think about the JFK assassination? Because again, like there's a lot of insane shit going on His there. His brain that's... did disappear. Yes, from that the is National true. Archive. They went to get it and it was gone. They stole the president's brain. And, you know, like I, the, the, the official story surrounding it, like so many other things in American history, is. A conspiracy theory in itself. It's incredible yeah. in, in the most simple definition of the term. So I think if you were talking about fictional portrayals of the JFK conspiracy and assassination, I think the more credible fictional version of this is advanced in Don DeLillo's Libra, which is basically like a, a novel about the life of Lee Harvey Oswald. Libra Basi- power, baby. It's Libra season. It's, it is Libra season. I baby. won. And, and, and in, I would highly recommend reading it. It's, a, it's a, a fantastic, fantastic novel. And David Ferry, Guy Bannister uh, are all big characters in that book. Um, the conspiracy, like the, 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 the narrative that DeLillo crafts in that, in that book is that, like, this, yes, the CIA was involved. The CIA and the mob were involved with it. It was like a CIA operate, like a sort of rogue off the books CIA operation that in, you know of which Lee Harvey Oswald was an asset in um, that was blowback from the failed Bay of Pigs invasion and their um, real actual like feeling of extreme anger and betrayal at Kennedy for not doing the air cover or not backing them or not not fully going to the hilt and invading Cuba which yeah. you know they very much wanted to do before Vietnam, by the way. Mm-hmm. Like that was like that was their focus is that you know the communist nation fifty miles off the coast of America, right? But basically, is the idea was not that they wanted to assassinate the president. What they wanted to do was stage an assassination attempt on Kennedy that could be pinned on someone who actually was a you know a committed Marxist, Marxist with, you know, pro-Castro sympathies. Lee Harvey Oswald was a, you know, socialist communist. He defected to the Soviet Union and lived there for several years. Um, they wanted to use it as a causus belli to have a second bite at the apple of invading Cuba and overthrowing Castro. But it got out of hand, and they're like, oh, damn, we killed the president. <laughs> Snap. Right. Which I find more credible. That's in much more knowing everything we know about the CIA and just the world. Like the the cool the cool smug guy thing to say after everything is like, usually the answer is incompetence. <laughs> but it's like it can be incompetence and conspiracy, and it usually is. Like what well, knowing what you know, couldn't you see the CIA being like, All right, so like we're just gonna perfectly miss his head. <laughs> no, <laughs> yeah, just, no. Yeah. Like our plan, here's the plan. And a little, there was a second team of shooters. I think it's. I think Oswald probably did fire those shots from the book depository, but I think it's also. I buy that there was another shooter. Mm-hmm. But the grass, yeah, you know, yeah, there yeah, were yeah. they like you know. Um, I buy that, or at least agnostic on it. Yet I, I'm just imagining the CIA is like, yo, check this out. We're gonna shoot his ear off. <laughs> and that'll be like a big yo he, he'll get the picture then and then it's just like oh shit the bullet was a couple inches to the left we blew his fucking head off oh, oh shit fuck. oh, wait, then oh, oh fuck oh the, fuck oh yeah, fuck for the next week being like oh fuck oh fuck oh fuck what are we gonna do what are we gonna do what are you gonna fuck 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 no 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 I know a guy in the mafia he can get this <laughs> guy with a gun uh, 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 there, there's this weirdo club owner who has a lot of dogs and shit everywhere we'll get, he owes us a lot of money he'll just fucking kill a guy um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's like that's 
One hundred percent. So like this idea that it was like, uh, yeah, like uh, they had to kill him to have carry out this coup. I think it's more likely that it was an intelligence operation that got way out of hand, and they were actually horrified when it turned out they actually blew Kennedy's head off and assassinated the president. That's the, it's the same thing with the Sarnayevs, where it's like people they're like, oh, like there was this un, there was this previously undocumented FBI contact. They it was a false flag. It's like, no, it's not. They were trying to cultivate them as assets, and then they like. They like put the phone with their contact in the washing machine. And like, <laughs> oh yeah, we never fucking knew them. <laughs> well, yeah, and like, and this is the point is like, um, I believe, and if you like, you know, I believe, like, if, if you look at like all the the facts around Oswald's life and the, like the bizarre inconsistencies and the fact that like everything about the investigation has just bizarre inaccuracies and obvious cover ups, makes sense when like I, I totally believe Oswald was an asset of the agency who was working with Bannister Ferry as like, you know, these cutouts that are sort of like off the books, but still, you know, part of an intelligence operation. Stone in the movie says at one point that Oswald was, and you know, still is up to the date of his death, a military intelligence officer, which is horseshit. Oswald was like a typical fail son, loner, weirdo, didn't fit in everywhere, didn't fit in anywhere, joined the Marines at 17 to glom onto that, and then became a communist to glom onto that as well. But I think, I mean, he certainly was, and I think like the fact that he was let back into the United States after literally defecting, I'm sure was done with the proviso that you are now working for us and that you are now, you know, our, yeah. our cat's paw. I mean, it makes sense. And Matt, as you quite really put it out, all of the insane cover up that happened after it makes perfect sense in this theory because if it had turned out that the guy who killed the president was a CIA <laughs> asset, whether they literally said kill the president or not, yeah. and maybe if, even if they didn't, that would be the end of the CIA. Right, yeah. right. And that's what they were covering the up. the U.S. government, yeah. End of the U.S. government. Like, and like the thing is, like with these conspiracy theories, like this idea that like at the very top, from the top down to like, you know, like kill the president. Yes, the CIA from its very founding has been intimately involved with organized crime. And I would think basically the best way to understand the CIA is organized crime for the American ruling class. Mm -hmm. That is what they do. That is the function that they serve. Yes. Is organized crime for like the original WASP ruling elite of this family who have always had intimate, intimate ties with organized crime in America, Europe, et cetera, right? It's like there are all these shady connections or whatever. And like the idea is not and like these assets, these people who are like have feet in both worlds, who are all incredibly scary, violent, unstable, deranged people who are very useful for them for doing things like, you know, killing people, smuggling drugs, assassinations, et cetera, et cetera. Is it like they control everything from the top down? Or like what's actually scary is that like they lose control of these people all the time and then they end up carrying out horrific acts of murder or terrorism and then they're like, oh shit, um, he, 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 he was kind of working for us. Better, better cover that up. Yeah, that's the thing. I'm, mm -hmm. I am profoundly a a agnostic on the whole Kennedy thing because I used to be, after this movie helped spark me and I got deep, deep into it and I was a full on, like, you know, conspiracy guy, uh, you know, <laughs> mob did it or the cia did it with the mob and all that i had a whole theory worked out you know read american tabloid and i'm like yeah i think that's another fantastic novel i uh, highly recommend everyone should read uh, and i was like that's basically what happened but i mean with time i think what basically happened is, is that i just can't buy kennedy as a threat to power enough to imagine a world where they would have taken the risk of, of trying to do it uh try to kill him like that because you know in a world where they can get away with that they also wouldn't really worry about him. You know, he wouldn't be enough of a threat. Their power would be so entrenched. So I just, because of my inability to accept that Kennedy is a threat, Alexander Coburn actually helped me think that way because he wrote a lot of stuff when this movie came out uh, uh, criticizing it. And his big argument was Kennedy was a Cold War heir. He was, he was an establishment figure. It's just absurd to think that he was a threat. And I, I still find that a persuasive point that makes it hard for me to accept any narrative that includes a conspiracy to kill Kennedy coming from the top of the government. Uh, I, I, yeah, I think like a Sarnayev type situation is uh, what very makes good. Sense no, yeah, so I kind of, that's a very yeah. good analog to this is because Tamerlan, uh, I mean, I, we can't say with some certainty, but I think almost certainly was an a gay guy. An, yeah. <laughs> All his friends, gay guys, mm -hmm. uh, an FBI informant. Yes. And not only yeah. that, to the degree that he killed three people a year before the Boston bombing and the FBI covered it up because yes. of his value to them as an asset, 
and who was, you know, like a, again, a dangerous, violent psychopath. Yeah. And then, like, for whatever reason, I, like, I can imagine, like, a situation where he's just, like, he feels like they've turned on him or, like, they're going to, you know, uh, throw him away or, like, he's been burned or whatever. And he's just, like, fuck it. I'm just going to, like, blow up the Boston Marathon to show them or get yeah. back at them yeah, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Or, or, you know, carry out <laughs> the actual, you know, thing that they were going to try to get him to pretend to do or some bullshit like that. Yeah. There's no way to know. That's the annoying thing about all this shit. Who um, could say? Ask Oliver folks, Stone to make a movie about it. Folks, who could say? At the end of the, at the end of it, who can say? Closing thoughts: Do we miss any other of the amazing uh, cameos in this film? John Candy. Oh, John yeah, Candy. John Candy. Yeah. Who plays like uh, Dean Andrews? D- uh, Dean Andrews. Yes. Uh, a, a, yeah, like another sleazy New Orleans lawyer who was Lee Harvey Oswald's who, lawyer. Who talks like a like a beatnik? <laughs> He's got the right TT but the wrong ho ho. <laughs> Daddy ho, yeah. Uh, John Candy. There are a few other gems in, in in this that I'm probably forgetting at the moment. Laurie Metcalf is good. J O Sanderson. Jerkoff Sanders is very good. <laughs> Jerk off instruction, Sanders. <laughs> so, yeah, I think, like, we're all, to varying degrees, like, yeah, like, kind of, like, living in the sort of, like, yeah, the, the historical fiction, the narrative, the world yeah. of Oliver Stone's yes, CFK. The world, the world where there was a, a great crime committed by a shadowy cabal, and we're living in the aftermath of it. If you're mixing Adderall and vodka all by yourself on 11 o'clock on a Thursday night, definitely watch JFK. <laughs> go I'm Sandy Kenyon go and see it develop a mania for two weeks and then just go back to your regular life and pretend like you didn't call your uncle on the phone and ask him if you knew David Ferry <laughs> see this movie <laughs> no for real though if you and your homie run don't smoke, walk if you and your homie want to smoke mids and really just like fucking go nuts Watch this shit. If you want to just take the the mild case of Epstein brain you have and and weaponize it into some sort of you know plague version of it, watch watch JFK. Are you going through a rough breakup and you just need something to do? Watch it. There you go. That is our review of Oliver Stone's JFK and the Kennedy assassination in general. My one of my favorite movies and one of my favorite assassinations. <laughs> and if you want a conspiracy theory that involves someone who is almost certainly a patsy in the real sense, as in not even in the same zip code when the shot was fired, look into James Earl Ray and the Martin Luther King yeah, assassination. Uh, Oliver Stone actually did want to make a movie about James Earl Ray that surprisingly never got made, probably because the actual deep state covered it up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they were, like, I like, that was, that was the thing. Like, when we got done watching this movie, I always, like, right, when it came out, we were like, how did this get made? And if there was just a board of deep state, like a deep state committee that had to approve movies, they were like, oh, he's going to tell the JFK story. We have to watch this. And they did. And they were like, yeah, you're fine, actually. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I would highly recommend doing some, uh, uh, doing, falling down that rabbit hole of uh, James yeah. Earl Ray as the uh, patsy for the Martin Luther King assassination. So what do you say? Want to call, call that episode? Yeah. Okay. Trust no one. <laughs> the past is prologue. Follow this one goes out to the kids. <laughs> Follow the money. You're close. Very close. <laughs> Bye, guys. Bye. Cheers. Cheers.